Hi guys, welcome to day two of our photography boot camp. Um, I'm Arabella. I'm Ellie. And we're Weekend Creative. That's us. <laughs> um, you know, every day of this week, we are showing you all of our best tips and techniques. We're showing you our process. And um, yeah, tell us if you were here yesterday, say hi in the chat. Um, thank you for joining us again. And if you're, this is your first time, um, please say hello and tell us where you're watching from. Um, but if you missed yesterday's, it was all about pitching and creating a pitch deck um, template. So definitely an amazing demo by Ellie. Um, but today we're working working on something else that's exciting and, and very fun and creative. And it's all about creating mockups um, for an editorial photo shoot. So um, if you, you know, want to check it out, stick around. Um, but yeah, we've already got a ton of people in the chat. Thank you guys for joining. Hi, yes. Sam. Hi, Laura. Hi, Thank Becca you again. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Super fun. Um, but yeah, so we are so excited to just get right in. So let's, Ellie, let's do wanna, jump in. Do you want to do yeah. it? Do you want to do the honors? <laughs> yeah. If you guys have questions as we're going through, yes. please feel free to ask them. Um, want to make sure we get to as many of those as possible. But like Arabella said, today we are designing um, a shoot plan. I'm going to specifically try to focus on mock-ups for you guys today and show you how I create those in a quick and easy way. Um, <laughs> so this is also a template that I've created for myself just like yesterday where I can duplicate it you know, plug and play for the next client that comes along. And um, so, yeah, it just makes my process super easy. I'm working in Illustrator today. Um, and you'll notice <laughs> that the branding is the same as the pitch deck that we created. So yes. I want to keep that branding consistent for our clients. Um, this is for uh, a <laughs> fake client, Bella's Florals. This is Hi. a a fun she um not named after anyone in particular but yes. uh just kidding <laughs> but it's just the like shade a, a the fun shade. <laughs> <laughs> a fun little shoot that, um, you know, we really think that if you're, you know, even if you're doing a test shoot just to build your yes. portfolio, practicing your whole process from start to finish. So practicing your planning as well as your shooting is um, really important. So this yeah. is what a shoot plan looks like when I send it to a client. Um, and there are three reasons why I create a shoot plan. The first one is just to keep our shoots cohesive. So when I create a plan, I can see all of the different mock-ups that I create and I can see, does the shoot tell an overall story? Do the images work together? Which is really important if you're working on a campaign or a product launch or website photos, you want the images to live well together. Yes. And then the second reason is so that I can streamline my process. So I can see, you know, I'm using the same colored board in these three images. So I just have to paint one of those and it just makes my process and planning and production a lot easier. And I know yeah. only what I really need to create and I don't have to do extra things. Um, I have extra Double work. The work. <laughs> yeah. And then the third reason is so that clients can see what they're getting. They get a chance to give feedback and approve things. And then that just eliminates or ideally eliminates clients coming to you <laughs> after a shoot and telling you that they were not happy with the images. Um, so all around. It's good for everyone. Oh, yeah. So um, the first page, I always give an overview. So I remind the clients of the goal of the shoot. Um, I put in the colors that they've given me. Um, or, you know, if the client doesn't give you colors, you can create your own little color palette for the shoot. Um, I always like to include a timeline for them just to remind them of all these things, especially payments and what, you know, they need to do, what they can expect from us deliverables, and then a breakdown of those deliverables, and then an overall mood board to remind them yes. of the overall direction and just to keep me on track as I'm planning things mm -hmm. out. Ted's asking, is the yes. template downloadable? Well, we do have, we do uh, have. let me hop over to that really quick. We do have a template that you can purchase. Um, it's similar to this. It's actually funny because let me see if I can scroll down to it. When I was making this template, I would actually hand draw my mock-ups. Yeah. Um, so you can do that too. You don't have, you can do mock-ups however you want. This mm -hmm. is um, from a while ago, but um, this is available on our shop. And just like yesterday, you can DM us if you want to purchase it and I'll send you a discount code. Yes. Um, and it's available both in Photoshop and, um, and Illustrator, in, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. A PSD yes. and an AI. Um. But yeah, this is also something that you could easily make yourself and add your own branding to um, and kind of develop your own if that's something that yeah, you prefer. Yeah, we always encourage everybody to kind of make it their own and, yeah. you know, um, have it like have that branding come out and shine reflect through. Reflect you mm -hmm. and reflect your brand. So yes. um, yeah, always like a fun time to do that for yourself. But yeah, if you're wanting something yes. quick and easy that you can start with, 
Uh, thank you, welcome. Sam, for linking welcome that, that shop. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Very kind. Um, yeah, and feel free. Yeah, guys, keep asking questions. I definitely want to make sure we um, can touch on those. Yes. So um, I typically don't do a mock-up for every single image. I do mock-ups more per set. So if the set is changing or if there's a big difference between the photos within a set, maybe I'll do a mock-up for each one. But if you're shooting 40 images, 50 images, it's going to be really hard to mock yes. up for everyone. <laughs> um, so, you know, and then if, so for example, if I, this is going to be just one image, um, I'm doing a mock-up for a website header. Um, I've put the dimensions here yes. for the client to see the products that are featured. And then I will type out a description here for them and I'll do a description of the still and the GIF. But if this was going to be like one setup and maybe we're shooting five images within the same setup, I would describe list out what those images were here for the client so they could see that. So um, first I want to show you guys a little trick that I use. So a lot of times when we're creating mockups, I'm using products or, you know, items like that I want to show the client, you know, here's the things that are going to be in the image. So for example, I know that I want to use an apple in this image. So this is just an apple PNG that I found online, it took a screenshot. Um, and I could spend the time to draw an apple, which you can do if you, if you want to, for me, I am not the best drawer. I'm not the fastest artist. So <laughs> this is my little cheating way of doing it. So I have a screenshot here. I've placed it in my file. I go up and I click on image trace. And this is what it will look like as a default. And I usually test out, um, I come over here to the preset and I change it to six colors. And that's the one I usually test out first because um, simpler is better, right? You wanna not have too complex of images within your file, but um, you know, it doesn't look exactly how I want. So I will change it to 16 and Amazing. wait on it while it <laughs> does its thing. Ooh, yes. Thank you, Andrew, for plugging that in. Pro tip, use free Adobe stock for resources. Yes, 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 yes. Free Adobe stock is the mm -hmm. way to go. Um, so once it's done that, I need to go up here and expand it. And once it's expand, it's turned into a little um, vectorized file for me. So then I can do my direct selection tool um, and I can delete out all those pixels that I don't need. And there you go. I have a little apple for myself Amazing. to use in my shoot. Um, and then down here, I'll show you guys how you can do it if you have multiple. I want to use all of these vases. I'm pretending that this client, Bella's <laughs> Florals, sells these vases on their site. And so um, I want to include all of these in the shot. So I'm going to go ahead and do another image trace. And let's just go ahead and do 16 to begin with. Okay. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm going to expand that again, and then I'm going to use my direct selection to get rid of the larger chunks um, of pixels that I don't want. And um, you can also actually, you can use the eraser, which I think is shift E, mm. but I'll just select it here. And you can also um, erase out ah. pieces if you want to. So that's another way to do it. Another option. Another option, which sometimes if you just need to get like a tiny little bit is better. Um, I'm going to go back to my direct <laughs> selection here. Oh, Anika says, hi, hi. And Winsome says, image trace is so helpful. Hi, it's <laughs> yes. so helpful. It's so helpful. Yeah. It saves my life. Yes. And um, when I get free Adobe more. stock images, you head on over to stock.adobe.com slash yes. free. Yes, Adobe has so many great resources I know. like that. I've definitely their fonts pulled, are amazing. Their like, stock is amazing. Hold stock images um, yeah. from their library for specific for like you know anything client related. Um, it's so helpful, and you can find like so much. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now I have these three bases, but you'll amazing. notice that they when you do an image trace, everything that's in that image is grouped together. So I'm going to select, I'm going to go up to um, object and then ungroup. Um, you could also do shift command G, I believe. Um, so now everything is ungrouped and then I'm just going to regroup, which is command G, um, just the vases on their own. Ooh, yes. And then so I kind of stay together. Then I have my little amazing. Vases. Okay. So that is my like super easy way of doing that. You can see I've already done it down here for <laughs> all of these little fun things. Um, and then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start working on my actual mock-up. 
You guys, the time just goes by so fast. (laughs) I know. I look up and I'm like, how is this possible? Okay. Jennifer says, that's amazing. I didn't know that. And yeah, now, you know, there you go. Now, you know, guys, I'm all about how can I do things the fastest like easiest most way efficient possible. way most efficient possible. way possible um you don't have time to sit there and like draw out a bunch of apples like no no who has time for that um and, unless you, know, you enjoy it unless you enjoy it and you love yes, to do it unless you enjoy it but the thing is like when you're working on client work sometimes like and this is something where like just the client is going to see it it doesn't really matter it's really just to give them a sense of what that image is going to be it's not really you know it's not going to be a work of art that's hanging in someone's home. So <laughs> good point. <laughs> you know, well, at least probably. Um, um, Andrew so, says, I love how these just look like cool stylized illustrations. Thank you, Andrew. I can't <laughs> really you, take too you. much credit since I did not draw them, but okay. Um, now, I'm, so I'm going to create a background for this image. I'm using um, my rectangle tool over here. Um, also M. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to eye drop. Let's see. Um, I drop my little white over here and, um, I'm going to just, so, okay. I want to create some fabric for this. And again, right. I want to just make this as easy and quick as possible. It's not (laughs) going in a museum. So, um, I, this is my little easy way of making, um, fabric is I'm just using my little paintbrush tool and, um, I'm just kind of I'm going to flip it to be fill. I'm just making like some little darker points um, that will kind of look like fabric at the end of the day, honestly. (laughs) It's just to give the client an idea. It's not, um, you know, you don't have to be. I think my point is that you don't have to be a a crazy talented artist in order to create mock-ups. Cause I kind of felt like that when I first started making mock-ups for clients and I would do these like hand-drawn little like, kind of like crappy <laughs> illustrations and I have felt really self-conscious about that and then I was like you know what it does it's okay like it's okay the point is just for the client to see what is happening like they don't yes. need you just need to, to get perfect. your point across to your client exactly, and that's, and exactly. if they get that then that's great yeah yep okay so I'm gonna do um group these all together and then I'm gonna make another rectangle over so that I can do a clipping mask um, just to crop off these other pieces, clipping masses, command set. Amazing. And then um, at the bottom here, um, I'm going to make the bottom board, which I'm going to make this orange <laughs> Ted color. Ted says, great attitude. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that's a good attitude to have. I mean, I want the, like, I want good details, but there are certain things that you can, like, are more important to focus mm-hmm. on, right? Like the actual yes. photos in the end of the day. Um, okay. So here's my Beautiful. background for them. This is going to be the bottom. Um, and here's the horizon line in the image. And then the, the background is going to be white fabric. And that's why I also will write out a description for them so that if there's anything that's like a little funky in the illustration, they know, um, they like know what I'm trying to convey. So, okay. So then I have all my things over here. I need to kind of make them more to scale because as you'll notice, these fruits are massive. <laughs> And <laughs> that's not um, the size Realistic. that they are in real <laughs> life. And I also need to bring all these things to the front. So rain, um, object arrange, bring to front is how you would do that. And these should be like more of a similar size. And yes. then these vases are definitely bigger in real life. Um, <clears throat> oops. I think actually all these things I'm just going to have to bring to front. So let's just do that right now. Okay, so um, amazing. I'm gonna start with these and see, like, okay, here's you want to try to make things to scale as much as possible. So this is kind of the scale that they will be, um, and I'm just holding shift as I'm scaling them so that they scale together. Because mm-hmm. if you scale just one of them, then the other ones might be off in scale. Um, so things that are like the same, if that makes sense, you need to scale them together. Yeah. And then I'm just going to play around, um, placing them into the scene and, you know, Beautiful. the final image, once you're on set, you're always going to make small adjustments, right? It's never going to be exactly, exactly yeah. what you showed. Um, but you want to try to get it as close as possible. So, um, and this is a great way too, cause now, you know, you're looking at this and you're like, Hmm, maybe I actually am going to need to include 
something else in this image. Like it's feeling a little empty or whatever. Um, So you can think about that as you're playing around with these things. Like what else do I need to include? Do I have too many things? Um, You can take things out and um, um, it's just a great way to like know what your um, image is going to look like. Amazing. this guy um cute yeah and okay so the other thing is um you know sometimes actually most of the time um that's not what I wanted to do um your um client is going to have products right that need to be in this shot so like in this fake situation, it's these vases, but in real life, um, you know, maybe you're shooting for a skincare brand or something like that. Um, right here, I'm holding option and dragging to duplicate that little apple right there. Um, you know, maybe it's like a skincare brand or, um, you know, something like that. And so, um, you can kind of create your own little, um, like instead of having to draw those out, you can just take a picture of whatever that product is on white and um, and then, you know, do an image trace and you have like the product exactly as how it looks in real life that you mm-hmm. can use to put, put into these mock-ups, which is really fun. Amazing. Um, okay. I love that so just way that you can do this. like the um, bring to the front. That's such a, yes. a good little. Very helpful. Very helpful for yes. sure. Oh, Ted says, yep. Never let perfect stand in the way of good enough. Yeah. Definitely the motto for mock-ups here. <laughs> Definitely the motto for a lot of our work. <laughs> for a lot actually, of stuff, I will actually. Say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly. For sure. for sure. Oh, cute. I love it. Okay. So if I wanted to um, see if this, actually, let's see if this will work without erasing my background. Yeah, it's fine because it's white anyway, so you probably couldn't tell. Um, I just want to like erase and have any questions about mock-ups or shoot plans or anything yes. of that sort as we are, as I'm kind of playing around with this. Yes, please drop it in the chat and I will be happy to um, ask and we'll, you know, we'll give you all the knowledge that we can. Ask and <laughs> you will receive. Yes, exactly. Um, Sam says, finish is better than perfect. It's something I really need to tell yes. myself daily. Yes. Yep. It's so hard. 100%. I know it is. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We can, um, I will show you guys this in one second. Um, I want to show you guys, um, in case you want to check it out to our website. Um, let me just zoom out really quick and show you. Oh, <laughs> I thought I was on my little hand and I was still on zoom. <laughs> Um, so this is what that could look like. You could play around with this until it's finished. Um, and then, you know, just like yesterday, if you wanted to create another page, you can, um, like hold down, um, alt or option, depending on if you're on Mac or a PC, Mm -hmm. um, and duplicate that. Um, and then you'd have that same layout that you could use to create another image, um, or another setup, which is super fun. So um, that is our shoot plan. Um, I'll hop over. Ooh, and... Jennifer has a question. Yes. How long does it take to make these mock-ups for like a regular photo shoot? Um, it depends so much. Like some, yeah. some. I think part of it is like how, um, like how easy the ideas come. Sometimes ideas, like you, you're trying for so long to think of concepts and think of ideas, and like you hit a wall. And then some shoots are really inspiring, and you come up with things a lot quicker or the client has a really good brief. And so you don't have to do as much, um, concepting and stuff. So it kind of depends. And then like how complex is the actual mock-up itself? Right. Like sometimes, how intricate. um, yeah, sometimes it's like super simple and like, it just takes a few minutes. Sometimes it takes a lot longer. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't, it's there's hard. not like a specific answer to that. Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish that it was more like, you know, cut and dry, but um but yeah I hope that answers your question no I think that was great I think it's hard to say it's hard it's you know and everybody has their own process and sometimes it takes longer for some yeah it does for others so yeah Yeah. and actually yes um so oh I wish that I had well that's okay. Um, tomorrow we're actually going to show you some images that go along with this mock-up that we have made. So you'll kind of get to see like 
what this mock-up could look like in real life. Um, so I'll, fit, I'll wrap it up too. Um, what I would do is I would um, crop this down so that these little like flowers are not coming out of the edges and all that. I would just do a clipping mask just like I did um, previously and finalize this. And then um, we'll show you tomorrow. I'll have Arabella pull that up before she starts working on the final image so that you guys mm -hmm. can see what that could look like. Um, but let's take a look at our work on our site. So, um, so for example, like a shoot like this one, um, this was a shoot that the client had a really good brief. They knew kind of exactly yes. what they wanted and, um, it was pretty easy to like plan out. Um, and for example, like you see, like there's this image and this image, which are pretty similar. So I didn't do mock-ups for each of these. I did a mock-up right. for one of these. I don't remember which one maybe like one like this, yeah. Um, where I showed the client, like there's going to be a two-tone background. There's going to be these little blocks. There's going to be whatever the ingredients are and in those particular products is going to be there because that was really important to them and the products themselves. And then I told them like, here's the colors for the rest of the backgrounds. Like there's going to be this green one. Um, let's see if there's another, sim there's not another similar one on here. We shot a bunch of images that yeah. looked like this. And so they could see that there was going to be kind of that repetitive image throughout. Mm -hmm. Um, and then even like some of these, like I showed them that like there was going to be all the products stacked up with hands. Um, and to do a mock-up of a hand like this, you can literally just take a picture of your own hands in whatever <laughs> like position you need a position to be. and then do an image trace. If you can't draw hands like me, I cannot draw a hand to save my life. <laughs> um, and there was like a bunch of similar images to this. So you don't have to do a mock-up for every image, right. but if it's someone like, um, this client, a lot of her, um, her candle, she is the candle company and all of her candles are kind of a different, um, scent, a different scent, a different, a different, story, a different story vibe. Yeah. So I really, we really have to do kind of a different shot and different setup for each image. So like there was a mock-up for this image and this image and this, and like all, they were all completely separate mm -hmm. because they're just completely separate images. Um, which is, these two, I think were, um, maybe in the same, I might've done one mock-up for those two. Yeah. I can't remember exactly. Um, but like these, it's all different, right? So you kind mm -hmm. of have to show the client all those different setups. Yeah. Um, exactly. Which is super important. Um, Ted said something really important. Yeah. Yeah, he yes. said, and it depends how much time the client affords you. So if yes, they can pay for true. it, then, <laughs> you know. That's true for sure. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Andrew says, are your, are your own hand models in the finals? Um, but wait, is it our hands? <laughs> like our hands? I think that's sometimes. what he needs. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> um, sometimes they are my hands. Sometimes they're Bella's hands. Yeah, yeah. Usually my hands. Um, but what? guys, I'm so sorry. I feel like my illustrator is like slowing down so much right now. Um, but we also kind of stopped doing that because, uh, it was really hard for me to direct and post things while yeah. also being the hands model. So, mm -hmm. um, we've kind of put an end to that. There's like a couple clients we still do it for, but, um, overall, we yeah. really try to get them to hire a model because it just makes our yeah. lives a lot easier. Oh, 100%. They're professionals, you know, it all, it's definitely, oh yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to show you guys too. So like once you do a clipping mask, um, it can feel like it's final, it's done, but you can still edit it if you double click into it. If my illustrator oh. will, um, you have to double click into like it do it multiple times until you get to where it's like ungrouped so that you can then like readjust things, move things around. Yes. Um, and then, yeah. And then when you click out of it again, double click out of it, it'll just like feel cropped, which is crop, great. Yeah. You're like, actually these apples look really massive. Like why are <laughs> they so big? Um, you can go in and adjust that. Cool. So, cool. Well, there is a mock-up. Um, Tomorrow, as I mentioned, Arabella is going to be starting to work on editing this shoot yes. and post-production. And so um, we'll show you guys what this mock-up looked like in real life once mm -hmm. it actually came to be an actual photo. Yes. And we're going to dive. Be taking over for the rest of the week. Yes, you'll get the Arabella <laughs> the rest of the week diving into post-production, working in Photoshop um, and Lightroom too. 
Yep. Lightroom and Photoshop. Okay. So both of them. So please join us every day um, for the rest of this week, 1130 AM mm-hmm. PST. Um, and yeah, come back tomorrow and say hi. So thank you yes. guys so much. Bye. We'll see you then.